And here we go. Welcome to the Great Work Insights Podcast by the O.C. Tanner Institute, the show that features the people, the professionals, the thought leaders, and the coolest companies. And now your host, the man navigating the discussion about the culture, the organized chaos, and the best practices that compel great work, Todd Nordstrom. I received a strange call a few weeks ago. It was from a former co-worker who... Quite honestly, I, I, I didn't think I knew this guy very well. He called and asked me for advice, and I'm not entirely sure I gave this gentleman the right advice, but you see what you think. This former coworker told me a story about his current work situation. He explained how he doesn't feel like he's getting the respect he deserves from his direct supervisor, and that he was actually scared he was going to lose his job. Here's the interesting twist to this story. He said he's not scared of losing his job because he's not performing, but because his boss doesn't listen to him. He's not being heard when he presents new ideas or has conversations. As this man talked, my mind began wandering. First, I thought, honestly, I'm not, probably not the best judge of this guy's work because I never really worked that closely with him. In fact, I may not have been the best listener to his story or his situation because the entire time he was talking, I was honestly thinking, why are you calling me? But there was something this gentleman said that did get me to listen carefully. Ironically, he asked me how he could get heard. He asked if I could help him reframe his words. Okay, so I am admittedly a word guy. I write for a living, I speak for a living, and I, I love nothing more than someone asking me for help to choose the right words. Instantly, uh, when he asked me this, I began answering. I was rattling off words he could use, um, answers he could say to his boss, conversations he could bring up, how he could communicate better and be heard. The advice I was giving was, I'm going to brag a little bit, it was good, it was golden, it was priceless. It made me realize just how good of a wordsmith I am. Yeah, I'm the word guy who can solve everyone's problems. Until I actually heard my former coworker reiterate my words back to me. And that's when I knew there was something else at play. My former coworker sounded, honestly, he sounded wimpy. He sounded unsure. He sounded like a person who was indecisive and, and I hate to say it, meager. Yes, this gentleman is listening to the show right now and that's okay because these are the exact same things I told him on the phone. It's hard to tell someone, hey, you sound wimpy. But the realization I had from this conversation with my former coworker was that he didn't need better words to get heard. He needed a stronger voice. How much do our voices impact our ability to communicate? How much does our inflection or our perceived confidence impact what a listener hears? Or what about things like timing? Does, does timing have any impact on our ability to communicate? Think about comedians like Jim Gaffigan or, or uh, Louis C.K. and their timing and their inflection while they're on stage. Because honestly, when you're watching a stand-up comedian, as an audience member, you laugh between the words people say. Consider presidential candidates or powerful public speakers or even newscasters or great storytellers. How much does your voice impact your ability to perform at work? Or in my former coworker situation, his ability to survive at work. My guest today, I'm really excited about this, has a voice many of you are familiar with, if not all of you. In fact, many of you have actually had conversations with our guest today. She, quite honestly, may be the most conversed with voice in the world, the number one advice giver in the world, and so well known, actually, that I'm willing to take a chance here during this recording to think that I can dial her up using my iPhone and Siri. Siri, call Susan Bennett. Calling Susan Bennett. How can I help you today, Todd? <laughs> For those of you listening who aren't familiar, Susan Bennett is the voice of Siri, Apple's computer program that works as an intelligent personal assistant and knowledge navigator within our iPhone. Susan, welcome to the show today. I'm so happy to have you here. 
Thank you, Todd. <laughs> this is almost freaky. Susan, I want to talk today about how people can be heard by strengthening their voice. But before we dive into um, that, I want you to share a little bit about how you became the voice of Siri. You are a voiceover artist by profession, correct? Yes. Um, tell, tell me about your profession. Tell me about how you ended up getting this, this voice gig at Apple. Well, it's a it's a long trail, a long story. I started off as a jingle singer years and years ago, mm -hmm. and one day the voice actor didn't show up for the commercial we had just sung for, and so the studio owner said, Susan, you don't have an accent. Come over here and read this copy, which I did, and I found that I was able to do it quite easily and quite naturally, so I read the copy, did the work, and afterwards got some voice coaching and ended up getting an agent and going to work in that field. Uh, voiceover has changed dramatically um, in this day and age. It's become a, quote, thing. <laughs> yeah. Everybody wants to be a voice actor. And uh, so consequently, everything has really changed like many and, well, I should say most businesses, if not all businesses, have been terrifically impacted by technology and specifically the web. Many times uh, the web has uh, had a kind of a negative influence in the sense that especially for artistic people, people who are in the arts in any way, shape, or form, utilizing their, their voices, um, their, their artistic skills, whatever, are not really getting paid uh, what they should get paid or what they used to get paid because so much is gotten for free on the web. Um, but voiceover is still uh, alive and well, and there's still a lot of work and a lot of different types of voiceover work. You know, not all of it's that, you know, hip, fun, sexy stuff like commercials and cartoons and that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of, you know, really uh, pretty uh, pedestrian uh, journeyman work, work a day stuff like uh, messaging and narrations and e-learning and things like that. But it's a really fun way to earn a living. It's very satisfying, very fun. And uh, you do get quite a bit of time off. Now, uh, listeners may not know this, but your your voice is actually all over the place, and it, and it's and it's kind of creepy talking to you because I know your your resume. What are and I, so I've I've heard your voice in numerous places. What are, other than being the voice of Siri? What are some of the other um, voices that you do and that people might be familiar with? Okay, yes, Todd, you cannot escape me. <laughs> 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 Sadly, that's true. Uh, you can hear my voice on many, many GPS systems and phone systems, and uh, the, probably the most visible thing is I am the voice of all Delta Airlines gates worldwide. I'm the one that tells you to, what zone you're in and uh, whether you made your flight. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, don't, I do a lot of work that isn't necessarily uh, – particularly noticeable, and I'll have to say that's especially true in the last few years because, you know, there's just a natural progression of things with, with a person's voice, and as you get older and your voice changes a bit, you know, you become, you know, your voice might, might become more appropriate for some things than others. And uh, so I do a little bit of this and a little bit of that, and basically the life of a, a voice actor is very similar to the life of any actor, which is we never really know where our next job is coming from unless we have, you know, um, you know, signed recurring clients, that kind of thing. Um, and so it can be a little iffy. It, it's not for the faint of heart, um, but it's very rewarding, very fun, and every day is different. Let me ask you, let's go back to Siri for a second. Siri's been around since 2005. When you were hired by Apple, did you know or did you have any comprehension the impact your voice would have on today's world? What, what, what? Actually, Siri has Siri was introduced on October fourth, two thousand eleven. Oh. Uh, it's the recordings that were done in two thousand five that became okay. the basic vocabulary for Siri. And what people don't realize is that Apple did not create Siri. It was a Norwegian inventor named Dag Kitlaus, and he he actually created the full functioning app. And Apple bought it from him for, I think it was like $200 million or something. Mm -hmm. um, so I actually don't know who chose my voice to be the original voice of Siri, mm -hmm. um, but it's, that's a kind of a cool thing. Um, the recordings were done uh, for a company, a text-to-speech company, ultimately called Nuance. They started off as ScanSoft. And basically it's IDR work, uh, interactive voice recognition. And so... The phrases and sentences I read for this vocabulary that became Siri, 
were created solely to get all of the sound combinations in the language. So you can imagine a lot of those sentences didn't make any sense uh, because they were just trying to get the sounds. It wasn't, you know, created for content. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, you know, it's really, really tedious, boring stuff, like reading hour upon hour of say the shredding again, say the shredding again, say the shredding again, say the shredding again, say the shredding again. (laughs) Yes. And so um, I'm glad that work is over, I'll have to say. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> so you weren't actually a- answering you, you weren't actually like recording lines that are the comments that we hear when we ask Siri questions. No. No, and that's the mistake that most people you make when they meet me they'll say, "How did you know the answers to all those questions?" And I kind of jokingly say, "I'm really smart." <laughs> but um basically that's the programmer's job. The <laughs> the the only contribution I made was the sound of the voice. Yeah. Uh all the answers that you hear are things that people at Apple have programmed. And so uh, this process is pretty wacky. It's called concatenation. Uh, Technicians, uh, programmers, computers go in to all of these recordings and extract sounds. And they take those sounds and reform new phrases and sentences. And it's those things that go on the devices as the answers to your questions. Interesting. So you didn't have to answer the question, what does the fox say? (laughs) No, no, I did not. Um, I want to go back to what I was talking about at the beginning of the show because it's it's something you work hard at every day. Let's talk about um, voice. Let's talk about inflection and timing. And let's talk about, before we do that stuff, let's talk about audience. When you start working on a project, let's say it's Delta or let's say it's, you know, your voice in Mission Impossible or whatever, maybe it's an advertisement. How important is it to understand your audience? Well, I think it's key because what the voice talent is trying to do is convey what the writer is trying to say. And many times you'll get direction from the person, from the, you know, the director who Mm -hmm. will give you uh, a clue as to how they want you to sound. Most of the time it's, it's kind of uh, commonsensical. Uh, you can look at the copy and say, you know, you're not going to read some very uh, dry, you know, informative medical narration, and that's kind of voice. You know, you're just not. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no one would listen to you. No one would pay attention. And so uh, a lot of, you know, the words basically indicate what the voice should sound like. Um, many times I find now that English isn't emphasized in schools. Everything is, you know, technology and mathematics. And uh, I, I, sadly, I think that uh, it's really affecting uh, young people's vocabularies. Um, there's, there are so many wonderful words in the English language and many of which, you know, younger people don't know and can't use. Consequently, it's difficult sometimes for them to express themselves exactly, to say exactly what they're looking for, exactly what they want. So some of the boys that were business is intuition, Mm -hmm. uh, just your own common sense and, and just getting a feel for what you're reading. But the voice is, is a very powerful thing. Um, just the sound of the voice, um, and how you express emotions with your voice. Uh, the voice is a very personal and unique thing. Everyone's voice is different. Certainly people can mimic the sounds of other people's voices, but uh, it's a very personal thing, as personal as your face or your fingerprints. It's, it's very personal. And uh, so it's an interesting thing to try to take such a personal thing and uh, throw it out there. Uh, for people to use. Well, let's, in, uh, let's let's talk about what you do because if you're reading a script and, and you're saying it's common sense to know if you should get excited about this or if you should be very serious or have a secure sounding voice about something else or maybe it's empathetic in you know a certain advertisement or what have you. I think what you're saying is right is that we're all so technologically um, connected today that people aren't like like my former coworker he wasn't expressing the passion he had for whatever project he was telling me about and uh, I'm I'll be honest I didn't listen to all the details because he was so monotone about the whole thing that I thought who would listen to you um how important do you think inflection is in our everyday conversations at work with our peers with our bosses with our coworkers well I think it is very important it's it's part of the process of of communicating of letting people know how you feel, 
um, how you, you know, is how you express yourself. But, you know, not everyone is an actor. Not everyone is theatrical. Not everybody is like, hey, here I am. <laughs> you know, some people are very quiet and uh, or, or are shy or have some other reason that they aren't able to um, convey exactly what they're trying to say because of uh, an inability to express themselves in a certain way. And that's why <laughs> that's why there are people that can, can do voice acting and, the, and there are people that cannot. Um, a lot of it just has to do, for me personally, I think a lot of this kind of thing has to do with just inherent um, intuition, just just inherent understanding of what you're doing. Let, let me for the for the listeners who may be sitting here and saying and saying, okay, I I know that 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 they're not that voice actor and they don't have that big inflection, but they do have an upcoming conversation that they need to have that's very important, or they do have a presentation they need to make that's very important. Are there, is there any advice that you go through, any uh, rituals or anything to get you into the mindset to say this is the person I want to be behind the microphone or on stage or what have you is there anything you do or anything you could tell the listener well there's a very big difference between talking to someone one on one mm -hmm. and having to talk to a, a large audience um, in talking to a large audience there are certain things that that you need to consider you know really be a, be very aware of, of of what you're saying what what the, the written word that you're trying to express and maybe go through the script and underline things that you think are the best, the most of greatest importance. And of course, you would emphasize those things. The main thing is try not to rush through everything. Many times, even those of us who are experienced with this kind of thing, a lot of times you get on stage and you're nervous. You know, a big group of people and they're listening to you. You're standing out there all by yourself. You get nervous. Yeah. Uh, even you know the uber professionals that do this kind of thing. You know, they they have a little bit of a you know. Uh, heart palpitation there before they <laughs> sure. before they work, and the best thing to do is remember not to rush, not to rush through things, especially if you're trying to be humorous. Um, you want to be uh, as uh, short and succinct as possible, and and give your audience a uh, a little space in which to laugh or to take in what you have to say. I guess those would be the the key things yeah. that I'd be able to advise. <laughs> Great advice. Uh, yeah, just off the top of my head, how how awkward is it? Because I mean, when you answered the when you when we started this call, it was so weird to have you in that Siri voice. How awkward is it for you to talk to yourself through your iPhone? I don't do it. Do I you? don't use Siri. Oh, really? I don't. Nope. Uh, I I don't. It's hard for me to explain why. Many people have asked me that. Of course, I jokingly say, well, I talk to myself enough as it is. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I think a lot of it has to do with the fact that I've always been in the music and voice industry. You know, uh -huh. that's, that's how I've made my living for many, many, many years. And, you know, I think that especially with social media and all of the modes of communication that we have now, I think I get overwhelmed with the sound of the of the human voice. And so I tend to go old school and just, you know, you know, tap the map on my phone or something like that. Um, I will have to say that those devices are, are very, very helpful, you know, for quick research. Mm -hmm. um, but as, as a general rule, I don't, I don't, uh, I don't really talk to Siri. Of course, one thing that influenced that was the, the one of the very first times I spoke to her, I said, um, hi, Siri, what are you doing? And she goes rather disgustedly, I'm talking to you. <laughs> I said, oh, Siri dissed me. All right, forget it. <laughs> I'm done with you, Siri. <laughs> oh, Susan, it's been an absolute pleasure having you on the on the um, call today. Um, if people want to learn more about you and all your work, which there's a ton of it, I, I checked it all out. And I also know that you do speak, um, you do speaking events and you MC a lot of events. Um, tell me a little bit about that. Are you on stage a lot? Um, I wouldn't say a lot, uh, but I'm working towards that. Uh, I'm working towards a keynote speech. So far, basically, I'm just do, I've just done um, Siri appearances as you know the original voice of Siri, and and I've done some you know announcing and emceeing and that sort of thing. Um, and it's really, really, really fun, um, especially at one tech conference in 2013 at the end, or was it 14? Anyway, last couple of years, I met uh, the Waz. Oh, if wow. you don't know who that is, no, that's um, Steve Jobs' 
partner and the, the person who actually built the original Apple computer, uh, Steve Jobs had the idea and the, and the vision, and uh, Steve Wozniak had the goods. Wow. <laughs> and he's a wonderful man. He's very, very interested in education. He has the patience of Job with all these people that, you know, young people that come and ask him about how to get it, you know, how to advance in their in their careers and things. He's just a great guy. And he's about as close as uh, any of the original series or any series at all has uh, gotten any kind of uh, like acknowledgement uh, was when Steve Steve Wozniak acknowledged me as the original voice of Siri, so <laughs> that was a special thing. Oh, very cool! And so, if people want to learn more about you and and what you're working on and what you're doing, or how they could contact you, where can we find you? Well, basically, for Facebook, a lot of people send me Facebook requests, and and I just use Facebook for people that I know personally. Mm -hmm. So, if you want to contact me, the best thing to do is go to my website, Susan C. Bennett.com. Bennett has two N's and two T's. And there's a way to contact me there through my personal email. Or you can um, shoot me a, a, a tweet uh, at Seriously Susan. And that's Seriously S I R I O U S L Y. Fantastic. And could you say goodbye to the listening audience as Siri? Thank you for listening, everyone. Bye bye. <laughs> Fantastic. O.C. Tanner has helped the world's top companies improve innovation through employee recognition. Learn what insights are in store for your company. Visit octanner.com today.